Hello everyone and welcome to the Saturday Geeks TARDIS Review with me, John Parker and... Me, Jack Kerling and... Me, Cody Crotis. We have a special guest with us today, again. Yeah. Um, Another guest video. Now, today, us three are reviewing the Novelli... Uh, what is it called again, John? The, the, the Novelli console? Noir Hartnell Console version 2.0. Oh, right, okay. Now, this is a completely brand new system, one that we've not really done before, and uh, we thought it would be great if we had someone along with us for the ride. So, uh, Cody, uh, I'm glad you're with us today. Um, right, so, John, do you want to start with the exterior, I believe, yeah? Yep. Now, okay. just a quick point to make here. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see on my screen, Jack, I have a little hood. This is the hood, basically. It's a little, line, little clock face, which I yep. quite like. When you click it, it opens up the actual hood, which should do. It's a bit temperamental. There we go. And you get this. Yep. Okay, so as you can see, when I turn my um, avatar around, it switches the compass around, which I kind of like. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool, yeah. Now, to activate the hood, I click the center, and it opens it up. And then you get the options. So what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and... Uh, do you want me to go around through them, or do you want me to just go ahead straight with the exterior? Yeah, go with the exterior first. Okay, so I'm going to click the materialize button. Oh, it's it actually got a materialize button. And a dematerialize on, yeah. Oh, um, set your daytime to midnight. Ah, okay. You should do that too as well, Cody. Yeah, you might well. Done. Wanna... Yep, yeah. okay. Um, well, that is pretty impressive. I quite like that. It is, it's quite a nice exterior. It was made by Al Blindside, which is one of the um, builders for most of the Novelli stuff, as long, along with Pippa herself. I do like the different kind of feel you get from it. It's very different compared to obviously the NLS and the um, H1 mm. exteriors, which I think is quite uh, OMG. Yeah, it has a <laughs> telephone, which is something we brand new, we've never seen uh, before, I don't think, on our videos at least. No, we've very nice. never, never before have we seen that. Especially, especially the um, the text and all that. That's that's brilliant. Hang on, just the phone actually. It does rotate, as well. Yeah. The phone yeah. rotates. That is pretty cool. That is really cool. Hang on, is it on like a circular thing? No, it's not. That's interesting. It's like rotates by itself. <laughs> but I have noticed really as well. This is a mesh exterior, but it does look very much like a sculpty. The textures make it look like sculptures. What I mean by that is, if you look at the windows, you've got these extra bits of wood, and if you look at sculptures, they always look like they've been moulded. Actually, you know, put together. You know, what it reminds me of. Mm. I'm not quite sure if you might get it, but Cody, you might. Um, of course, in the past, the BBC have done Doc Two animations, haven't they? Yes. They the, have. the recent one, Dreamland. Have you both seen that one? Yes. Yeah. The style of that exterior, the outline of it, should I say, kind of reminds me of that. It gives me a good little animated mm. feel. I think it just mm. looks brilliant that, that way. I, I have noticed that there's not enough lighting. In fact, there's no lighting at all on the exterior, and therefore the midnight yes. look is actually making it hard to see the detail. It, that is Do you think that we should push it to mid midday just so we can look at the more of the detail of the texture work? Yeah, I didn't really give that a thought, but yeah, I agree. Yeah, Let's switch it all back oh. to midday. Yes. So there we go. Oh, yeah. Now okay, we can see the, the intricate detail in there. Um, Detail-wise and it's textures, mm -hmm. perfectly spot on. Especially mm -hmm. like you know, um, you know the windows. Yeah. The three top ones are the same. Then on the bottom one, you've got the two left and right ones, which are the same. But the middle one, the the, the bottom middle is different. Um, I do love the extreme detail put into those windows. That's is the top. The top three are um, are like a dark glass look. Basically, and you've got the grey look on these two, yeah. and then you've got this like hexagonally weird textured one, which I do like. It's very unique. Well, the, 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 the thing that, the, the one thing that um, strikes me is that it, this has been very, very carefully detailed and, and thought out and planned. Mm. I mean, look at the police box sign, the top. Mm. Oh, the police box sorts. Zoom into it and you'll see all like scratches yeah. and ridges and whatnot, you know. Oh yeah. And it's like, it's like it's got dust on it. Yeah. So, very, very fine. I think, to be honest, the most detailed exterior um, seen in any system, in any of the systems. Yeah. Of course, the downside is the lighting. Literally, if the lighting was put into that exterior, then this would personally 
come on top of anything else. It so at the moment, it kind of borderlines with H woke stereos for now. Mm. Oh, I have used, I have spotted something. What's that? Tiny detail, but this um, logo, logo, you know, the Saint John ambulance sign yeah. is not centered to the panel. Just thought I'd put that out. Oh, and have you it, also noticed it says that we're the... floating? Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, it is and all. Yeah, that'll be due. Yeah, that's because this face hasn't been uh, done. Probably because it was too far out, so they didn't do that. But that's not important because not everyone's going to do that, are they? They're not going to be like, mm, looking, at that, looking at it from yeah. that angle. The lock is on the left door. You know, is that common with those old exteriors, or was it ever always on the right? Um. It's always been on the right, but you mentioned the locker just maybe noticed something else. What's that? No handles. <sighs> ah, yes! That would be a bit of a drawback. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if this was in... I don't know about that. Is that intentional or not? Maybe. Or maybe they forgot hmm. it. I'm wondering if that's accurate to the prop. Well, um, we could check online. Yeah, we could. Which props that? The partner. It would be yeah the oh. partner exterior. Should we have a look? Because we don't want to make a bad. No, 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 no. Well, would yeah, you yeah. look at that? What? No way. No handles. No way. Mm, so and is that look, And look, there's the bottom. So apparently, okay. the heart and looks. This is exactly like the heart and exterior. Okay, we stand corrected. We do? Oh, that, that's surprising. And... No handles? No, no, I'm still right about the map not being centred. But that's not important. But that's just... Wow. Well, okay. Well, there we go then. No, no. <laughs> Stand corrected. And I also, if looking at this... Now, this is a... This probably is not the accurate... The accurate TARDIS exterior. Because, as you can see, the, this has got a blue background on the police public call box sign. Well, this of course. Hasn't. Doors but that's not... Important. What? Well, of course, um, do bear in mind, obviously, we always used to see hot, well, we only do see hot in black and white. I mean, you do yeah. see some coloured, you do see some coloured pictures. Uh, yeah, the, um, that's probably what they were going with, actually, is black and white look. In which case, that's very good. Yeah, no, that's probably what she's done. What he's done, rather. But in all been... fairness, this kind of makes it, it gives it own, its own style, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Also, the lantern. Yes. Yes, very nicely detailed lantern. Oh, ooh, light bulb is actually—it's oh. actually got a light bulb in it. That's amazing. I do like that. Yeah. What is the land impact on this thing? Twenty-two. That's pretty good. It is pretty good. It is really good. So, um, yeah, that is really, really good indeed. So there we go. They've got right, no. Okay. Um, on. Just one last thing before we carry on. They've got actually got a physics thing at the top, haven't they? If you right-click on it and see the mesh, they've got a little thing on the top. Ah, oh, yes. What is yeah. that for? Let's have a look. No idea. I'm thinking it or something. No, collision prim. Yeah, it's a collision prim. So you can, so when people jump on it, I guess. There you go. Look, it just creates it so that you float above it slightly, which makes it. Yeah, fair enough. I can't really argue that, can you? I suppose. I suppose it's just to help with physics and causing problems with collisions. So. Okay, right. so now I have to say something. Um, the yep, console and the exterior are not linked, which means even though I've rezzed this exterior and you saw it land and you heard it land, the console did not react at all. It oh, will nice. still be powered off and unfunctional. It, unfunctional? Wh whatever. <laughs> and so we'll see that now when we go inside it. Oh. Do you want to switch to midnight, by the way? Yes. So, some position, midnight. Now I'm hoping I'm hoping I've set the home position correctly. So when we click in there, maybe. Wait, why is there like a play button next to my uh, my? It's it's a Novelli exterior. You have to stand inside the exterior, or the map doesn't come up. Um, oh really? That's that's interesting. Oh my! Oh, it's wow, it's a, a way of preventing people going in there without you being in there. Oh, now that's a super cool idea. That is really good. However, it only works for the owner, so you need to come <laughs> back down here, John. Oh, well. Um, I kind of put the home location at the wrong door on the wrong doors, so let me just go ahead and fix that. <laughs> home set. There we go. Coming out now, if it will let me. Apparently, I can't teleport there. Oh, because the console's not off. Well, oh, the console is off. Sorry. This is a problem. Let me just go down to you. 
Indeed. Well, there we go then. That was fun. All right, you just click on the uh, map while I'm standing next to it. All oh, right. Okay. Good idea. So the reason why the map wouldn't work would be because of um, the console being off. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's temperamental with that. But notice one thing: when I walk away from the doors, I think no, ignore me. That's just with these doors. These doors work, so you have to go next to them, and they'll open automatically. But adding to the exterior, I will say that is a very, very, very good feature. It is. It is. It's a bit temperamental because they're not linked, but it is. It's a good. It's a good. Good system. So I'm going to go ahead and close the doors. I think the doors is over here, isn't it? Yes. There we go. Doors are closing. Okay, so, now then, this is where the fun begins, because I've got to turn this thing on, and when you first get this console, you'll ha you'll notice that um, when you pair it on, which is this button here, Ooh. okay, um, these two levers here are the take off and land, but if I try and take it off, I'm going to, I'm going to turn unavailable off of this. It says the fluid link is missing, and I'm gonna have to turn Second Life down. Came a bit too late, is it? It's on fifty. Oh, well, there you go. I was, I was much too close to it then. Ignore it. Anyway, so as you can see, it says the fluid link is missing. Yeah. And that's because we have to actually set up the fluid link and set up the navigation key that allows us to fly the thing. So we do that by um, finding the thing. So close that, open that, and if you see it underneath it, you'll now see there's a circuit board with electricity. Oh. Underneath it. See, Jack? Hang on, I'm just moving around. Oh, yep, yeah, I can see it. So what we do is we just simply grab the fluid link out of the... Uh... Oh, where are we? There we are, fluid link out of the inventory. Drag it onto the ground and it should... There we go, slots itself into place. Now I can it go actually, ahead and activate it. I didn't notice that, I didn't actually see it, uh, I didn't realise it actually kind of moves itself onto the... That is yeah, really cool. Does. That was nifty, that was. And we close it, it up. And then we take off. And there we go. That is very good. Now, we have to drag the navigation key onto the ground. And that should slot itself into place. And there we go. And then once the sculpture is loaded, it's loaded rather, there you go, there's the navigation key floating above the console. Okay. That's amazing. And that's how you set it up, yeah? Yeah, that is now set up, it should work. Okay then, um, is there a lighting system on this as well? To, uh, I have yet to figure out what the controls do. But uh, I do have a Hartnell instructions thing, so I'm just going to find the lighting switch now. If you'll just give me a mo. I'm hoping there is a lighting device. Yes, there is. Good. Utility panel. What's that one look like? Uh, that one. Right. Lighting is number two. That one. Okay. Lights on. And apparently that is the lights on. So there isn't much... Oh, oh, there, oh, oh there, we go. Go. there we go. She just took a while to kick in. Oh, that's a nice reflective surface. Look at that. Yes, they they are. Yes, ah. that is a feature of this console to do like reflections. So there we go. This is the TARDIS now in activity. Right. Okay. Um, so do you want to go around and actually show what the, some of the controls do? Yes, and I'm going to have to use the art and instructions for this. Okay. So at the very top of this instructions thing, I'm just going to shrink that up a bit. There we go. We've got the flight panel, and the flight panel is this one. Which is this panel which I'm right in front of right now. Okay, so those. So, two... the lever on the left is the one that we use, which is the takeoff lever. Yep. Then the middle thing here is a nav key lever. Mm -hmm. Then the landing lever. Then the nav key itself. And then the fast return switch. Okay? Wow. All okay. the others, I think, are just for show. They just make sound effects. Which is still pretty cool. Mm hmm. Okay. So I think if I click the nav key lever, it just nothing. <laughs> oh, you have to click the actual key itself and then click on any database, my note card, uh... to set the location and where you want to go. 
The landing lever, of course, requires that you actually have a landing location set, but in this case, it just goes ahead and lands the console itself anyway. Where? Slash tech, forget. It doesn't know. I think it's just a just a landing. You just you just you are landed. Okay. So that's the, that panel. The next panel that we have is the access panel, which is this one. And this is so they've got the main doors lever, mm -hmm. the manual landing button, and the extension wall lever, which I think is for like if you want to add extensions to it, I okay. guess. Um, the next panel is the role play panel, which is I guess this one. Yep. So this one here is the cloister bell. I'm not oh. sure if that sounds accurate, but it yeah. isn't. I don't think because I do remember it being different. But that well, it's got a nice wobbly effect to it. I do like it. But saying yeah, that, I, I like I like the way the sound is done. Mm. Oh yeah, so do I. But I think that was intentional. I mean, do bear in mind that you've never we have actually ever heard the cloister bell. I think in the classic series, or did we? No, oh, yeah, we we I have. I think done. we did. I think um, other other people have. Use the right one. It just happens. This one hasn't. Ah, right. I can't actually remember that. But okay. Um, also, it would have been nice if some of the lights turned red. Yeah, that is a feature that many consoles don't implement. I don't know why. I think it's just because we haven't seen enough of it happening in the console in the actual series. But then again, yeah, I was just going to say, classic-wise, I don't think when the cluster bell is initiated, anything goes red. Yeah. So that's not really a feature we could request if you want to keep it canon. Yeah. True. But yeah, true. anyway. Okay. So the second one is this top one over here, which is the add on detect lever. I'll go over that a bit later when it comes to the hollow deck. Oh. Which is an extension feature to this console. Okay. The third one in the middle is the uh, shield lever, which is, this is really fun. If you all just stand close to the console. Oh, no way, really? Click it. Oh, that is amazing. No way. Oh, well, that's definitely Console something. shield. Uh-huh. And the owner can walk through it. But anyone else who tries to walk through it... Can also walk through it. it. No, no, I was walking through it at the same time you were walking through it. If you walk out... Oh, I can't. There you go. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. I like the sound. It works the same way our, our shield works on the exterior, on our exterior. Oop. And now you've got camera problems. There we go. I'll turn that off. Now, I didn't see that on my screen because the mesh didn't load. What, the shield? Oh, yeah, it didn't load. It wouldn't load. It was taking too long to load. Right. But oh well, doesn't matter. You guys saw it, so you've got camera perspectives of it. Yeah, that was really good. What do you think, Cody? That was a very interesting feature, actually. I don't think we've seen that on any others. It, it was no. actually requested for our console, but I just we, I didn't do it mainly because... I didn't really think it would work as well as I wanted because if you imagine people can still teleport inside the thing. Yeah, that's true, but still, it's, well, it's yeah. good to see. A lot's been thought about. It's a, yeah, it's a, go it's a good feature to know. think about, and I do like that. The next thing that we have is this number four over here, which is the holodeck selector. Again, I will go over that later. Okay. Number five is this one here, which is the foreman's yard lever, which I haven't properly gone into, so I don't think I personally can go into it. But it is for if you have a former shard, which I do actually think. Do we get a former shard? I'd have to be. No, we don't get a former shard. So we can't press okay. it anyways. But that's not the point. Number six is the holodeck lever itself as well. So there you go. That's pretty much the role play functions. I'll, I'll go over the holodeck later. Okay. The next panel we have is the security panel, I believe. Yes. So number one is the security options. Now, this is specifically if you've got land, uh, if I can find it. There we go. So you've got security on, security off, and reset. So that's lower. Okay. Yep. So I, I can't really de demonstrate that without probably causing problems on our land. So. But it, it acts as like a proper security thing, you know, kicking people and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, number two is the current regulator. This like live makes the whole thing live. Oh. See? Now, if you remember, Hartnell himself turned this feature on to shock one of the people and I think so. oh yeah, yeah he did yeah, yeah I think I now, remember, yeah. if I turn that on and then I put the hyster hysteresis regulator on on you get warning hysteresis at critical level and there we go 
That is a very violent sounding sound. What, what happens if one of you twitches the console right now? Uh, okay. Nothing. Nothing. Or I suppose it's just for effect. Would have been cool if she had had it so if someone else touched it they did go flying back, but that. It's oh, well. nice that the feature's there. Hang on, this. So apparently the sound is never bugged. Oh, yay. Oh, you're joking, really? <laughs> oh, we yeah, we turn on. And turn off. Are you sure it's not, um... Okay, no. we're going to try to turn the power off and back on again. And that's what happens if you didn't fly into an elf. That's quite an interesting sound in itself, the powering down while in flight. Yeah. There we go. So we shut that thing up, right. <laughs> uh, that's it. Next one is the sensors panel. Which is this panel over here. Uh, the first one is the outer door button. The second one is the radio, radi radiation switch, which I've got to find. Oh, there we go. Right, radiation switch. I click that. There you go. Radiation. Ah. The so next one is that's the one what, that sorry? the HO. Um, oh, what's it called? Oh, what's it called now? The H the latest HO console has that, doesn't it? The radiation mm. sw switches yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, but it's. I think the HO one is role play specific, where you can control it like that one. But there's no button for it, so because technically you wouldn't be able to control it with the button on the actual console. So HO made it so you can mm. click the whole thing. True. But you can also have it on role play mode where it does it automatically depending on where you land, which is kind of cool. But anyway, number three, which is what is regulator. Yep. I click that again, just like the other one. It creates this like explosiony, staticky sound. Um, number four is the voltage regulator. Okay. Yeah. Number five is this thing here, which is the master power regulator. That controls the whole lot. Wow. And then you've got number six, which is the scanner switches, which I can find. And there you go. I can go Where's scanner it? on, and uh, there's the scanner that pops up in front of you. All right. I thought the scanner was the other TV machine over there. And if you click it, it actually loads the. Uh, or it would load a web page that would show you the uh, scanner. Well, that's interesting. It is actually. And there's a, there's a data switch that I can turn on, and now I can show you different things like Gallifrey and whatnot. Well, it just gives you the name of the, the sim and how many avatars are there and whatnot. Mm hmm. That is very cool. It's very cool. Maybe that works by detectors on the sim. <laughs> Who knows? That's why it's called a sensor panel. So if I turn those things off. Oh. Uh, oops, I turned this text off. I want the text on, but I also want to turn the whole thing off. Reset, okay. No, scanner off. There we go. Oh, it slides in then. Slides in. Right, the next panel is the utility panel, which is the one I've already slightly covered. With the lighting but basically, and what? Basically, power. Then you've got the lighting. Then you've got the sound, which yep. is the volume control. Oh, that's quite good. There you go, it's a bit louder now. I don't know, I'm number three. Um, fluid link access, which is the this one, which allows you to see the fluid fluid link. Yeah, fluid link. And then that one's the activator, which activates the fluid link when you click it. Ah. So you can use it. Um, number five is the fluid link. Oh, so that's the reset. It just activates. That's what they call it, a reset. <laughs> number six, sorry, is the light move controls. Now, this is kind of cool. You see that big light over here? Uh, which light, sorry. The big thing about Oh, yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, well, these are how much you want to move it by, from low to high. So if I go low one, see it moves slightly? Yeah. Now if I do the next one... How on earth oh, do they get... That is pretty damn cool. How do they get the uh, the reflection thing to to move with them to move it with it? I mean, 
Oh, that's been done by probably done by projectors, Jack. Projectors, huh? Light projectors. Then you've got that's the next amazing. one. Which just moves it a little bit. And this one. And then this one. Which just sets it back to over there. That is really good. And you can also, I think you can, if I did that one. No, sorry, that one. And then I clicked it again. Clicked it again. Maybe that one. There you go, it's moving back a bit now. So it's just basically you just got to fiddle with it and then eventually you'll move into different places. That's really good. That is and really that's good. all of the panels, I think. Oh, the light move. Oh, yeah, so yeah, explain the light move controls through this forward, backwards, tilt forward, tilt backward, and reset position. So there we oh. go, that explain that's explains what they do. So forward, backwards, and then tilting the thing forward. There you go, see, tilting that way. And then tilt backwards, which is that one. Is it? Yes. That is really good. Really, very good. I like, I like that very much. And we can reset. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. So that's the controls. Now. Now, before before we move on, actually, I think it's best to mention a bit about them. Those controls are brilliant compared to any console system that is currently available. Those features mm. are amazing to have. They are unique. I will say that. They're very all, unique. Not all of them are unique. Obviously, power and all that. But well, yeah. But you know, a I mean? good chunk of them is good. A very good. Um, and they work unique. in their own way. Mm. So, okay, next. Now the next thing I should say is just have a quick little scenery thing before we get onto the, the meaty stuff. So as you can see, this is a, um, the fault regulators. You've got the screen here, which is a loop of the time vortex, and that will show you the location if it has it on, has it on store. So that if you go around bad. here, you can see behind the scenes of the console, and this is cool. Oh. So there we go. They're now lying down. And anyone can be kicked off them. Simply by clicking it again. That's so there really we good. go. I've got a bit of storage uh, there. Then you've got inside here as well. So you can sit down and have a have a bit of a relaxing moment. Is there some more bed stuff here? Yep. I noticed the scripts can lag out if you click them too quick. There's another bit uh, in here, isn't there? Ooh. Yeah. Now, oh, up here. Yep. Oh, I'm lagging a bit. There we go. So if we go up here. This is an area where. Ooh. Oh, there we go. This is an area where you can plonk stuff. I believe our friend. Uh, rest a pub, not a pub, bar over here in the corner. But you can put whatever you like here. This is That's the free space for you. I like the fact that they've actually given you already some extra rooms to do stuff in yes. rather than actually buying I've them separately. do give you this extra room that you can get. Although this physics problem is annoying. There we go. There we go. go and down. also, saying that, that's outside. That's it. Okay. <laughs> For its price, from what you've told me, this is all very, this is very reasonable, completely reasonable. Yes, it is. But if you guys want to know the price for this console, it is two thousand two hundred lindens, which I think's it's perfect. a an appropriate price. Absolutely yeah, perfect, perfect for that. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. now then, I'm going to do a demonstration of a landing somewhere. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, and I'm just going to do fun. that now with the. I'm going to open the hood up and activate it. Okay. It should already be activated, actually. But yeah, it is. Um, so to do this, I have to click on the key. If you will let me. Apparently, I can't do that. The key is refusing to work. So I'm going to redress it. Okay.
Do you think it's because we did the whole um, fluid link? Oh, never mind. So there we go. If I click NN database, yep. We can now choose one. I'm going to choose Gallifrey Main or Gallifrey MA, and then I'm going to click the land button. And as you can see on the picture, we are now at Avatec. Oh, so I go up to the door. Oh, yes, yeah, so I've got to open the door, haven't I? I keep getting confused between them opening themselves and not opening themselves. I've just the noticed door. the BBC TV logo. Is it? The BBC yes, TV logo. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a nice hint. So if you click it, teleport. Yeah. It should. There you go. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to take that away from there. There we go. Now you'll notice that when I teleported, the Whoa. exterior took off and landed where I teleported. Okay. Why? Because. And I'm afraid this is a drawback that we have to yeah. speak of. The HUD works by landing the exterior whenever it detects the avatar teleporting. You can turn this off simply by clicking the rim of the HUD and it will close the HUD like that and it will no longer do that. It says the HUD is off. You won't, it won't harm you then. Harm you? So it won't <laughs> land the exterior then. Right. Now, okay. this is because the console and the exterior are not linked at all, and then it works simply by guessing. Right. As in, when I teleport out the console, because the hood automatically tele reses the exterior whenever you teleport, it looks as if it's just landed there. Now, the problem with this is, because they're not linked, how does the exterior know when you've took off? Well, that is also another drawback. Let me explain. If I go inside, I'm going to just turn the hood off so we don't have any problems with that. I go inside, I click it, teleport. You don't go with me. Don't, you don't go with me. Okay. Right, so you, just look, you keep looking at the thing. Okay, I go We're inside, watching. I close the door. I haven't took off yet. Alright. Has the exterior took off? Yeah, it has. Yeah. Yeah, but the console hasn't. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just getting something. I've gone inside. I've closed the door so noobs can't, or even though we know that that system's protected, you know, I'm thinking I want to make sure the doors are closed. I go inside, get something. I open the doors again to go back out. I've got the hood turned off because I didn't I want see. that to resing it. I teleport back out, and the exterior will not res. At all. So I'm like, where's the exterior gone? I haven't took off yet. I suppose the um, map not appearing kind of compensates for that, but yeah, I agree. That should this be... is the de this is the drawback about not linking the console and the exterior. Mhm. Mm um, which is a shame, you know. It, but every system is different, so. Okay. You know, so to, have to do that again, I'd have to reactivate the hood and then click the materialize button, or I could just teleport again, which I would which would be daft. And here we go, it's coming back. Okay. Now, a few things before we go. Um, these two buttons here are control the door locking. So if I click lock, there you go, the door oh, is now okay. locked. Mm -hmm. And I can't open the door. Even, I, even though I'm the owner, I can't open it. That's good. Click the unlock button. And there we go. Um, the settings does all the stuff like cloud on, cloud off, seat eject, shields, um, resing, res hold. Well, what's res hold do? Pause resing has been switched on. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> Didn't that stop it from just taking off? Possibly. Whoa, 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 I'm not resing. There we go. Let me try and do it again. Take, let me close the doors. Yeah, it's taken off. Yeah, that that's taken off. Okay, so we know that didn't do anything. <laughs> oh! Oh! 
I think I know what it does. If I teleport out... Yeah, it's just gone ahead and said, where do you want to res it? So it's actually basically saying, don't res. It's actually giving the option now to res the, the, the exterior, which I can't oh, now do. Ah, I see. Rather than doing it automatically from your own position. Mm. That's a nice feature, actually. Be honest, it's just gone red. Too bad. Yeah. Um, what else we got? Shield on. I'm going to guess that was the shield in the console. But I'm going to also guess that because they're not linked, that hasn't actually done. Oh, hang on. Is there a shield out? No, there isn't. One second. Let me just see what that shield thing has done, if anything at all. I believe there is supposed to be a shield in the exterior. I'm slightly confused why there's not one that's appeared, but there we go. Yeah, because there should be a shield for exterior, shouldn't there? But then again, if it's not un if it's not linked anymore, then um, obviously it won't be, will it? Um, one sec. If I just shield on now, it has to be the exterior. It must be. But it's not working. Hmm. I believe the Novelli exterior I have has a shield in it. Hmm. It must be specific to the, sh the exterior then. It's a possibility, yeah, because I don't think my Hartnell would have had a, ever had a shield around it. That's okay. actually kind of cool. I can click down res now and it won't, it won't do anything like Um. That's not too bad. Now, the Novelli button is just so you can remote destination right. stuff. Okay. So I believe I can like, choose the location, it will auto do it for you. Tony's PlayStation in the roadside region of Tony's and Biggies. <laughs> so what does that So take? I'm going to guess, I, I guess that works where if you're inside the console it will take it off. I guess. Oh, or or it will sure. land you there. If I go inside it. You can. You guys come inside it as well. If you can. Yeah, we still can, by the looks of it. Huh. Uh, there you go, it's dematerialising now. Oh dear. Have you, have you, hang on. Oh wait, there you are. Way. There he is. I'm going to guess that if I close well, the doors now was... and click the Novelli button. Sorry, say that again, Slipper. That was dangerously close. <laughs> <laughs> so if I click on the Gallifrey MI now, I guess we can take off automatically. I'll click it one more time to absolutely make sure it's it picks up my choice. And if I click that land now, ah, maybe what? that's worked. Yeah, it has. So perhaps it's because perhaps you can do it using the hood. That is very slightly confusing, actually, but. You can you'd get used to it. It's a, it's, it is a brand new system that we've never tested out before. So I've noticed the fading is a bit slow with the exterior landing. Yeah, I've noticed that as well. You can, we have to go back in there <laughs> oh, right, okay. to do the final check of the holodeck. So if we go inside... Oh, hang on, I've got to walk away from it, I think, and walk back in. Yeah, that's the problem with sensors, guys. <laughs> Teleport. Okay, and now okay. door close. I'm just going to turn that res hold off. I'm now going to close the hood up a bit. And now, take off. Right, now then, holodeck. Yep. Um, right, step one, res the holodeck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come above it, yeah. teleport on top, and I'm going to go ahead and res this holodeck. So, holodeck. Whoa, Jesus. It is very big, but luckily I fitted it on top of the console pretty well. In fact, it might have snapped itself too. No, it hasn't. No, has it? No. I don't know whether no, it has not quite. 
Well, there we go. This is inside the holodeck. And to start with, it starts off as space. But we've got to go ahead and activate the console now to um, rest something in this holodeck space. So I'm going to go come inside the console. If I can get there. There we go. And I'm going to go up to the holodeck buttons, if I can find them. Yeah. Uh, this one. Mm -hmm. Click the top switch. Is it top switch? Yes, holodeck detected. And now I'm going to click the bottom switch. Oh no, so that's not wrong. Not the bottom switch, the one to the right of the bottom switch. Whoa. What's happened? The exterior's here. Huh. That's cool. So if I click the holodeck button now, this is nice this nice big button here, I can now choose one. Desert. And it's pushed us right down. That's lovely. Oh wait, I get the idea. I get the idea. So now I can walk outside the console. Oh, uh, so if we if we, if me and Cody go back into the console uh, room room. Yeah, oh, yeah, I can now I come can out. If I can find I'm now it. Now inside the desert. Up oh, there we are. So there I you go. See. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool indeed, oh, I quite like that. Oh. And look at the clouds, they're moving. Oh yeah. Now if I go back inside and change the scene for you guys, if it'll let me go back inside. And gone. Ugh, the map is failing. I've had this with our system where the map just simply won't let you go there. Try closing the door and then opening back up again. No, the map isn't deciding to fail. <laughs> it's a bit temperamental of a, of a system, actually, with LSL. Yeah. Um, let me just teleport directly into it. Is the door open for you? Still open, yeah, but of course we yeah, can't walk into it. It's closing the console because I just left the script out by double clicking it too quick. I know the exterior closes the door. It's unlocking and locking itself by the looks of it. Regardless, there you go. <laughs> oh god, we're being pushed down again. Well, that was an adventure. You're not really meant to be in the holodeck while it's changing scenes, yeah. I don't think. Well, technically, we couldn't help that because obviously the. Wow, that is a nice scene. This is great if you want to like have a relaxing moment on the beach. Oh, oh nice. That is very nice. Oh, I love the water when you go underneath it. Oh, wow. It's a bit laggy, but... Uh... Oh, would you look at that? Oh. Well, that's interesting. This is cool, it is. <laughs> it is really cool. Okay, see if the map works this time. Hopefully it will. No, I think I have to read. I have to re-land the exterior. Let me do that for you. Let me do that for you. Teleport into the console, guys, because otherwise you're going to get pushed out again. Yeah. Changing the scene to zero space. Zero space? Oops. This sounds interesting. What? It's apparently still a beach. Ignore that, the, the map hasn't updated. Well, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, zero space in the realm of nothing. Which is, this is basically, um,. The never ending, like the zero space. space. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? We've got Roman Spa, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay in the console. You just have a look, at, you look at the camera around. 
Yeah, let's run this far. If we fly. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on. I'm actually stuck between the whole lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have no idea what this is done. Don't go inside it. Just come around it. Stay in the way we get pushed ah, down. There we go. I'm okay. I'm in fly mode, so I'll just yep. stay here on fly so mode. Am I. So there you go, that's Roman Spa. Uh-huh. The next one we've got is Nerva 2. And that's just space. Oh, oh no, 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 it's no. taking water res something. Okay. I believe this was used in a Doctor Who story. I'm trying to think which one though. Because those pods are familiar. I believe it might have been a classic story. I think it might have been a Baker, a Baker story. I was thinking that, yeah, it might have been. Well, a look, Baker at, story. look at the Z fighting happening. You and the your Z. You and your Z fighting. Look these wheels. The tape wheels. Also, the tapes are going inside the walls. Indeed. Actually, this um, reminds me of Revenge of the Cybermen. The next one we've got is Aftermath. Oh god, fly. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Very apocalyptic. This is basically why it says Aftermath. <laughs> And notice that this is a lot of mesh, and if you look at edit, and click edit linked, these are actually one whole chunk of mesh, which means you will encounter physics issues, which I did notice when I was going around this uh, aftermath scene, and beforehand. But uh, still, pretty good. Uh, the next one we've got is cemetery, cemetery, rather. Which is pretty basic. Oh, oh there wait, we go. There we go. <laughs> that explains why it was basic. You hadn't res yet. You even got sound effects. Yes, I can hear. <laughs> Smoky, foggy, misty. What's on the thing is, whatever you do, do not blink. Gone but not forgotten. Delilah Derbyshire. That is, that is a reference to Doctor Who. Has Delia Derbyshire. Delia. She, oh, she was the um, theme the theme writer, I believe. All right. Then you've got here lay the Borden family. A cut above the rest. R.I.P. I was kind of half expecting slightly funny things to be written on the gravestones. Papa Lazarou, you're his wife now. Oh, hang on a minute, Jack just found a thing. Oh, well that's cool. Found a tomb. Oh. oh. Now, would it be cool if you saw the doctors, like like one of the doctors, <laughs> lying there, or or a a reference to a show who someone has died or something in a coffin or something? Oh, this is very different. I think this is like Rassilon's tomb or something like that. Yeah. Maybe. It's very maze-like as well. Fly guys, the next one is coming up. Dalek City. If I'm thinking right, this is one I've already seen, and this is actually quite an interesting design. It's very maze-like. Like my camera is failing miserably with it. Yeah, I'm just mm, going, to, is, I'm just going this... to mouse look. That's a good, a good shout. I, th I think I've seen this one before. So okay. I've, I've, had a look I've tried this. going through a door, and it's just pushed me out of the object. I'm literally still stuck. Physics. Between. It's too. It's too close together. The physics engine is yeah, basically saying nope. Yeah, could you turn this one off? Because I'm not actually even in looking at this. I'm just being pushed right out of it. There is literally no more now. Apparently. Uh, okay. In fact, I'm getting script errors. Could not find object next. Oh. Okay. Right, yeah. Yeah, because you know what's happening there? The script is trying to raise the objects called in previous and next. No good right. job. That That's... is a scripting fault. <laughs> Let's go back in. Right, I've deleted it now. Okay. So, there we go. Right, um, do you want to pop to the ground now? And we will yep. do our usual business. Just give me one tick. Um, one tick, there's just some extra things I want to click if I can find them. 
Because as I said, they've got some switches that don't do anything. But they do make some very nice sounds. I do like it when console makers do that. It's like, well, no, yeah. the button doesn't actually do anything, but we've made it so you can pull the lever and it makes a sound to... Yeah. yeah. I love these sound effects. They are super cool. I don't know which one else to click. So there we go. That's, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I've just noticed a little bit of the attention to detail. The little, the little bolts that mm -hmm. hold stuff together. Oh yeah! They've actually got like screwdriver slots on them. Oh, and then normally they just use textures for that, but that's super duper cool. That really is. Which is actually what you wanted, Jack, isn't it, with your consoles? Yes. To be able to, be able to do that. For detail, yeah. Yeah, and it's all rounded off as well. Oh yes, a quick note, by the way, most of this I think is done, no, actually no, I think all of it is done in off-world mesh, I believe. So things like in Blender, or software like Cinema 4D, Max 3D, etc. But I think it's Blender that's used mostly. So this is proper HOO style, you know, where it's all off-world mesh. Not None of it's done in prims, I think. I think there's certain parts are done, like sculptures, and there might be some prim work in here, but most of it is off world mesh. Okay, so I'll land you up back down at the uh, at the ground. Now I'm I don't actually have a location and I well I suppose I could do it through manual landing. We haven't done that yet, have we? No. If you want coordinates however, let me just bear me one My note card maybe. Well I've got a coordinate for you if you want it. No I don't. Uh, let me just let me just hang on, let's just find out how to do manual landing. I don't think that has got us anywhere. Well, yeah. you, you didn't put anything in, did you? No, let's just... One sec, let's just work out. Because there's no manual land option. There's my note card, so you can, you can do it inside the note card, which is... not... Oh! Ah... Yeah, the note card's inside your hood. And I think it might also be inside here. Inside the console itself. But you can, you've got these different locations here. Okay, we'll just put one underneath. Oh, okay. Um, I'll just call it um, me. <laughs> Mega Mondo. What coordinates? Uh, 11. 11. 116. 116. Uh, then I'll then go for 23, I suppose. Yeah. North. Save. It's now recorded the change. So I'm going to take off. No, Novelli, my note card, previous. It's not in it there. It hasn't updated. Oh, there it is. Next, me. There you go. That's definitely set right. I'm going to guess so. Let's try this. Right, open the door. Nope, it's just gone straight to another tank again. Okay, don't worry about that for now because um, I don't know. Try That'll, try it or... this, this is purely because they're not linked, so nothing's communicating with anything. I see. So I'll just teleport to the ground. Myself. Okay, fair enough. And um, here we go. Okay, now for our ratings, it's it's pretty difficult to decide what to do them or not because this is a brand new system, and I think it's just better off to point out. I I think we can do a standard rating, so what we would do if it was a month system, but the note that we should t take into account here is that this is a brand new system. It is very different. They are not linked. We know this. So these 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 problems that we've had are they're going to happen. So technically, this is more or less like a, in a, in like a, um, a beta stage. Um, they don't call it beta. Well, no, but you know what I mean. I didn't mean it like that. I just meant like obviously that it's um, in that kind of format, and obviously there's a lot of 
there's a lot of area for improvement. Mm. Yeah. But at the same time, it is a very advanced system which kind of does. Um, there are yeah, a lot of pros and there are a lot of cons, and I think the pros do outweigh the cons on certain points. And on other points, the cons can outweigh, but it depends. What? The pros, the pros do kind of um, trump the HRN and less because this does come up on top, even with some of the things that we think could be improved. This still is more or less the best and advanced system to date in Second Life. Mm. I think. I think anyway. Uh, Wix. Wix is another one, um, which I believe we should really review at some point in the future. Wix. But, oh, uh, sorry, that's Wix. Yeah, <laughs> the Wix is the Wix. website. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is one we should probably review in the future. But obviously, for now, from what I've, from what I remember with the Wix consoles, even even this is still more advanced. So there is there also is another system that we this. haven't gone through, and that is the Coal Works TARDIS is made by Apple Coal. Well, either way, we'll say that for another day, for now. Um, okay, John, mm -hmm. out of ten, what would you give the exterior? Exterior, I would give... The textures I find a bit over-detailed, which makes it look a bit cartoony. So, um, a, a low nine. A nine. A nine, okay. Uh, for the interior, it's a bit better. Yeah, much better. So I give it a height nine point five. Okay, um, Cody, what would you give the exterior out of ten? Um, personally, I quite like how the exterior is done. So I yep. would say probably a, a slightly high nine. Okay. Um, for the interior, what would you give it? I do quite like the interior. I mean, I've got a couple of my own personal little things that if it, if I had the console, I would sort out. But that's uh, not like what, for example, not, in a, in a, in a way. Well, when when we were stood next to it, mm -hmm. I noticed that because our avatars are actually quite tall, uh, right, we okay. dwarfed the console. And if I, if it was my console personally, I would have to make it slightly taller. Mm. That is a very good point. I never actually thought about that, to be honest. It is, as Valley herself has said, um, Pippin Valley, she said that uh, it is hard to match um, real, like, actual measurements in Second Life to the ones oh, that well, would be in yeah. real life because definitely, it's definitely. completely different. And many other people have said that as well, by the way. It's not just the people herself who said that. It's many people. I, has, I agree with her. It is very hard. They, the numbers that you see on this uh, position, size, and rotation, they do not match <laughs> what real life would match. And in fact, I, as you said, it's like, these avatars would be 10 feet tall. I mean, obviously, with the concepts tall. that we've done, that we've done on our own projects, we can't, you know, we struggle to uh, get to the right, you know, mm. the right level it is of very detail. Hard. So yeah, it is very difficult. So yeah, um, what would you give the in uh, the interior of ten then, with all that in mind? I, I I do still like the way that she's made it, and I like the attention to detail. So that's mm. probably I'm gonna have to agree with what John said and say a high nine point five. Okay, brilliant. Um, for me, in my case, the exterior, I'm gonna give a nine point five. Um, really, I suppose that, that I mean that exterior is very, very, very advanced compared to many others. Of course, the only thing that lets it down some slight texture issues here and then, of course, lighting from windows would be mm. nice, and of course, you know, from the lantern as well. So, but all in all, I still find it very, very powerful compared to H1 Endless. Therefore, nine point five it is. For the interior, I'm also. Uh, I'll also give it a 9.5. Yeah. I'll also give that a 9.5. Because, again, you know, um, th th there's so much that has been given, especially all the extra space to put stuff in and, you know, customise yourself, you know. Uh, I feel that's a very good um, 
part to have for the console, so I'm, I'm very pleased with that, and of course H1 and this have never done that before, so of course for her to do it for her own system, it does make it look really good. So, yeah, 9.5 on, I'm, on my screen I'm just showing the lighting effects, so with the, 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 the way the textures react to the lighting. Which I think is really good. Mm. It, it would they, work really it well. Have, it does have some good um, um, advanced lighting model features on it, it's just there's no lighting actually on the, on, on the exterior itself. So, folks, that is our uh, review of the Novelli uh, Hartnell console. Of course, this was a much longer review than any other before. Obviously, it's a brand new system, therefore, we're pulling up some new routes. <laughs> so, um, also, Cody, thank you for joining us. Great to have you. Great to have another uh, um, a third opinion as well. Yes. And actually, do support it very opinion, much. Yeah. It, it, I think it's very good um, for a new. Uh, console system review to have a have a third opinion because it kind of supports it so yes thank you very much and uh, of course folks that is the end from us now or mm -hmm. of us so until next time see you soon take care and bye bye for now bye bye guys goodbye that is all we have for today folks join us again next week on another Saturday Geeks video to find out what adventure we embark on next thank you for watching feel free to like and comment on the video below remember to subscribe so you can keep up to date with our latest videos. Till next time, take care, stay safe, and remember, let, let your geeky side out. out. Toodle pip. Toodle pip.